My name is Philip Zimmern. I'm a professor of urology at UT Southwestern. This is in Dallas, Texas. I originally trained in France, then did my retraining at UCLA, and I've been here on the faculty for the last 27 years. I've received a distinguished chair from John and Felicia Kane in women health. The goal of this abstract was to report on our long term outcomes after electrofulguration for antibiotic refractory recurrent tract infections in women. Those are women with at least five years of follow up after the fulguration. There appears to be durable clinical cure and improvement with significantly decreased need for long term antibiotics in this group of 96 women followed for a mean of 11.2 years. This uh, sustained improvement is encouraging and uh, may open the door to consider this therapy in our guidelines for the management of this complex. Recurrent urinary tract infection is currently defined as three symptomatic urinary tract infections in a year or two in six months with polyvirin cultures. So this is the first thing we do, we review the patient history to document this recurrent pattern. And then we assess the upper and the lower urinary tracts with a typically ultrasound or CT scan for the upper tracts for persistent bacterial strain. And for the lower urinary tract, we check the residuals by virus scan, typically less than 100 ml. We do pelvic exam to exclude large prolapse. We oftentimes recommend avoiding cystogram to include bladder or urethral pathology, which could have been missed, missed like a diverticulum, for example, or reflux issues. And finally, we do cystoscopy to look inside of the bladder for areas of chronic inflammation or chronic cystitis. My indication to perform this procedure, so the ideal candidate is a woman with a documented history of recurrent infection with a completely negative urological evaluation of the upper urinary tracts by ways of examination and imaging, who during flexible cystoscopy has areas of chronic bladder inflammation which have not resolved by antibiotic courses. We term this condition antibiotic recalcitrant recurrent urinary tract infection. So it was presumed for a long time that these chronic sites were the location of these infections and why they recurred because bacteria were deeply seated into the tissues and were protected from the effect of the antibiotics. The antibiotics scan eradicated the floating bacteria, but now they went deep in the tissues. We confirmed this after years of research efforts here at UT Southwestern and published in the Journal of Molecular Biology in 2019 a paper proving the presence of this bacteria in the bladder wall biopsies of women with antibiotic recalcitrant recurrent tract infections. And this finding confirmed prior studies in the, in the animal model about 10 years ago that uh, there were in fact quite some reservoirs in the bladder from which these infections recurred. So this is the candidate for me. As far as cystoscopic findings, they are typical of uh, what we call chronic cystitis, they are usually in the bladder base or trigon, which is where most bacteria arrive in the bladder and attach to, and they can spread to the whole bladder. The fulguration procedure itself consists in burning the inflammatory surface lesion that we've seen on cystoscopy. This is done under general anesthesia, typically as an outpatient procedure. We use, I use at least a small bug B electrode, a very a small tip electrode, which is introduced inside of a female scope. I use a low setting just to burn the superficial layers of the bladder where those lesions are located. The duration is quick, typically the 30 minutes, but can be longer if you have multiple areas to uh, cauterize. The bladder can be extensively cauterized, in fact, so when you have larger lesions, involving not just the trigon or bladder base, but the rest of the bladder, like you would do for large bladder tumors, you can clearly do this fulguration without affecting the bladder size or function long term. 
because of these areas are denuded for a while and they're exposed to urine constantly with a variable pH, there's a risk of infection afterwards from deep-seated bacteria which manifest themselves in the urine and cause infections. For that reason, for the first typically six weeks after the fulguration, we use a low-dose daily antibiotic prophylaxis to prevent a secondary infection while the healing process unfolds. Some of our patients continue on these antibiotics for longer, depending on how they are on their follow-up visit at six weeks. The healing is slow in the bladder, and so uh, you have to keep, be mindful of that. Repeat cystoscopy is currently part of our routine follow-up at six months after fulguration. That's the time it takes for the healing process to be complete. A scab will form over the areas that you've cauterized, then the scab will come off, the new tissues will come from below, and uh, <clears throat> this whole process in a wet environment like the urine environment uh, takes a while. So six months is a good timeline, and we've incorporated that suspect findings as one of our outcome measure, as well as a clinical you know, response to the fulguration in our publications. Some patient will need to be retreated. I have classified this bladder lesion in a very simple staging system. The trigone or trigonitis is what we call stage one. That's the most common. When the lesion extends just beyond the trigone to the bladder base, that's a stage two. When the lesion extends lateral to the ureteric orifices, we call that the stage three. When they involve the whole bladder or pancystitis, that's a stage four. The Stage one lesions very seldom need repeat fulguration because they're very localized to start with. Whereas the lesions that are, are stage three and four or lateral to the ureteric orifices or involving the whole bladder, those lesions uh, may have to be fulgurated again. It really depends on how people do after the first fulguration and whether you have reduced the number of infection sites sufficiently to cut down on their recurrent infection. So I usually wait six months at least after the six months cystoscopy to see how people progress. And if they recur and have still visible lesion on cystoscopy, I will offer repeat fulguration. And in a recent publication on this topic, we've shown that another 20 to 30 percent of this patient can be permanently cured. No real complication, but adverse events can occur. The most common initially is frequency, urgency, suprapubic pressure or pain. Those rarely last more than a few days. It can extend longer in some patients, probably those with more deep-seated infections or more advanced lesions. Other than those secondary symptoms after the fulguration, you can have recurrent infection, as I mentioned earlier, which may have to be treated or prevented with early antibody prophylaxis. And then in some women who are on uh, either anticoagulation with Plavix or Eliquis, you may see bleeding, and bleeding can go all the way to clutch retention. And a few times a year, we have these patients who are readmitted for clutch retention that may need clot evacuation. Transfusion is exceedingly rare. <clears throat> 